Does keto no longer work? This is what a keto diet did for my husband back in 2017. In less than nine months, he lost 81 pounds. Keto worked. Keto success stories are still there, but less common nowadays. Did keto suddenly stop working? Did our bodies catch on and say, wait a minute, you can't do that anymore? Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Westman, and welcome back to another Dr. Westman Reacts. Thanks for the video ideas of what to react to and feedback. If you don't have my top 10 tips on how to start keto in the right way, please look in the description below. I've sent this video, Why Keto No Longer Works, by Dr. Becky Gillespie. And it, of course, caught my eye. Keto, in my view, still works. Of course, you have to know how to do it. And there are a lot of people trying to learn online, kind of like me trying to learn how to do some housework around the house, a project, that sort of thing. So you can take stabs at learning on how to do it, and it's amazing how much you can learn. But a lot of people aren't doing keto correctly or, or in a way that an influencer or doctor who's trained in it might advise you. So I wonder if that's what's going on here, and or is it true that keto no longer works? This is what a keto diet did for my husband back in 2017. In less than nine months, he lost 81 pounds. Keto worked. In fact, his story was one that was echoed by many back then. Rapid weight loss with inflammatory markers and HbA1c measurements dropping from dangerously high to ideal in a matter of months. Keto success stories are still there, but less common nowadays. Did keto suddenly stop working? So there we have the credential. Dr. Gillespie is a chiropractor, and I, I've never met her, never seen her present at any of our me meetings, but that's okay. I'm not sure the particular version of keto that she prescribes or, or advocates, but clearly her husband had lots of success. And it was interesting, she used the past tense for keto worked. So is there something going on where it stops working over time? Did our bodies catch on and say, wait a minute, you can't do that anymore? In this video, we'll examine what happened to keto and how you can cut through the distractions to recapture the advantage. In case you are wondering, here is Keith today. Why is he not appearing with me live? Well, we are saving him for a big announcement right after Christmas. They came out with a new book if you wanted to know what the announcement was. You know, back in 2017, when Keith lost his weight by following a ketogenic diet, a device we wish we would have had is the Lumen Breath Analyzer. While it doesn't directly measure ketones, it analyzes the carbon dioxide you breathe out to determine the fuel your body is running on. Specifically, are you burning fat, carbs, or a combination of the two? Here is how easy it is to use. First thing in the morning, before I eat or drink anything, I open the app and follow the instructions. So in my program, I don't recommend that you measure the breath ketones. I don't recommend that you measure blood ketones. You can, but it's you know a lot of work and it's a big distraction from just following the food. Oh, you can also measure urine ketones. And years ago, Dr. Atkins recommended that you use it well, or you can just follow a simple system. Keep the carbs really low. Your body makes its own ketones. If your hunger has gone away, you're losing weight, your clothes are getting bigger, generally you're in ketosis. In fact, some people measure ketones, the breath, blood, or urine, and they're not in keto ketosis and they worry about it even though they're getting results. <laughs> so the, the goal on a keto diet is not ketosis or get, getting ketosis measured, the, the, the goal is results. And not everyone has measurable amounts of ketones in their breath, blood, or urine, and they're still getting results. So it's too bad she's focusing on, well, when you think about it, her husband didn't use the ketone breath monitor. It's interesting she's bringing it up now. There is an affiliate link, so she gets some money apparently if you click through that, but I don't think that's enough to make you recommend it if there's not a good reason. Let's see. Inhale deeply through your lumen. Hold your breath. Exhale in three, two, one. 
In seconds, Lumen shows my results in an easy to read display that also shares the percentage of fat and carbs that my body is burning. And there are other meters as well. I don't mean to just talk about one meter. One that comes to mind is sold by a company called Envoy. And the Envoy company has come to my clinic to actually have clinical testing of their instrument. So I just have to assume that this is working. I don't have much personal experience with it. Lumen is scientifically proven to meet the gold standard of metabolism measurement in validation studies. Before Lumen, the only way to measure your metabolism was in a hospital or clinic with a costly and time-consuming test to measure the RER, or respiratory exchange ratio. Because Lumen meets this standard, you can feel confident that you are getting actual insights into your metabolism. I can also use Lumen throughout the day, giving me in the moment feedback about what my metabolism is burning for energy. There are no filters or anything to restock, so you can test as often as you like, getting unlimited real-time metabolic measurements. Well, <laughs> there are other machines as well. And it, actually, the, there are handheld monitors now that you don't have to be in that globe in the, the, the hospital. But so anyway, this is pretty much a promotion for one product, but let's think more globally or generally about just measuring ketones at all. Not really necessary. If you'd like to get a Lumen device for yourself, they are allowing me to share a link that saves you $75. You'll find the link by opening the description area below this video. If you're on your phone, click the word more to open the description area. There are two things that I've observed over the past six years that make it seem like keto no longer works. The first is the dilution of keto. From snacks to scare tactics to extremes, today's keto is not the same as it once was. Well, so the type of food apparently has changed. Well, we've always taught a real food-based sort of program. In fact, the keto program that we teach goes back 150 years before there were apps and, and products, no keto junk food in the, the stores. So keto still works if you learned it the, the way of, of eating real foods. So if you're following a low-carb keto diet, don't be alarmed that it's one day not going to stop working because of some biologic reaction or, or homeostatic mechanism trying to say you can't do keto anymore. I, I like, so what we're going to see is that the, the foods have changed and the, the, some of the attitudes have kept people away from that. And I, I agree with that. The second is a collective mindset shift, which I will explain. You know, the keto diet is not new. It originated back in the 1920s as a treatment for children with epilepsy. Well, so that was a little discouraging. <laughs> Actually, the type of diet that Dr. Atkins promoted and, and that I use in the clinic didn't have its beginnings in the epilepsy world. And you have to know that these are separate sorts of approaches with different philosophies. And so the, if you had a seizure disorder and you ate just a little bit of carbs, you might get a seizure. I mean, a grand mal seizure where you, you lose consciousness, fall on, on the ground. And so that is a kind of situation, a diagnosis or disease that you have to be very strict about carbohydrates. You might even measure macros at every meal. I never talk about macros. You might even be worried about ketone levels. I don't ever have people worry about ketone levels. So the keto diet for diabetes reversal and for weight loss actually started with the Banting diet back in the 1860s. It was then in the Osler textbook of medicine, one that I have in my office. If you come by, I'll, I'll show you at least a couple pages from it. And it was used then without regard to the epilepsy because so if you eat carbs and you're using a low carb diet for diabetes reversal, the blood sugar will just go up a little bit. You don't have a seizure or you might stop the fat burning if you're using it for obesity for a day or two, you're not gonna have a seizure. So you don't have to be so strict on a keto diet when you're using it for obesity or diabetes or metabolic syndrome, that kind of reversal. So I wonder if Dr. Gillespie is inappropriately worried about strictness and ketosis and all that because she thinks it comes from that ketogenic diet for epilepsy beginnings. It's, no, it's very different. And yet I've seen registered dietitians, I've seen professors at universities make that same mistake. 
thinking they, they've only done a little bit of work into the research of the background of this. And they think oh, keto must mean epilepsy. No, no, we're talking about a, a diet of different beginnings, different philosophy, different levels of worry about going on and off. And you don't have to measure the ketones. That Maybe that's why she's getting into the ketone measurement. Dr. Atkins' work in the mid-1900s gave the concept of eating a high-fat, low-carb diet a new puff of life at the turn of this century that was then fully revived back around 2016 when the ketogenic diet found social media. Suddenly, the internet was flooded with success stories and before and after pictures of incredible weight loss results that came about due to nothing other than shopping for and eating different foods from the grocery store. No supplements were needed, no semaglutide miracle drugs were needed. In fact, the entry level was barely perceivable. You just put different foods in your grocery cart and you lost weight. That still works, but we stopped working it. Eating keto meant giving up things like cookies, cakes, and candies. There was no gray area. If you ate a cookie, you were kicked out of ketosis and no longer following a ketogenic diet. Today, we eat keto cookies. <laughs> when net carbs became a thing, keto cookies and other keto snacks became a thing. And we were more than happy to go along with it because now, suddenly, we could eat cookies. Well, I'm not sure who she's saying we. I mean, I don't recommend that. Of course, the, the royal we, meaning you know, Americans in general, eating what is put out there in front of us. Sure, there's been a lot of keto junk food now put out there. Always look at total carbs, not net. That'll help you when you vet these things. But I, I wish burger and steak companies would put great for keto diets on those sorts of foods because if it is really just a matter of people hear keto and they get directed toward and then they choose one thing, you know, that's not going to work because you have to be very strict about eliminating other carbohydrates. So take the time to learn a little bit about a properly formulated keto diet because just going to the grocery store and, and seeing what's there saying keto, that's not going to be an effective way to do it. I like cookies, but I know they're not the secret to weight loss. I want them to be, but they're not. They're not today and they won't be tomorrow. So there, I, I have a little different philosophy. There's a weight loss phase and a weight maintenance phase. And so I explained to people coming to my office at Duke University, Durham, North Carolina, that for a while, yes, you have to make some substantial change. I mean, if you do the same thing, eat the same foods, not much is going to change. So you can use dietary change, you can use medication, you can use surgery, you can use programs that the doctor sells you, the, the bars and the shake program. That's the weight loss phase. During the weight maintenance phase, most people can add back some carbs. And so I, I'm going to hold out and say that, yeah, you can have cookies, but you can't have them as often and, and as, as in the quantity that you had before that led you to the problem in the first place. Of course, if you have sugar and ultra processed food addiction and a little cookie makes you eat the whole box or the whole you know, thing of Oreos or, or your child's tin of cookies that are made over the holidays, that's me, you know, then you want to stay away at least most of the time. So I wonder if the, the concern coming from the ketogenic diet for epilepsy is, is at play here where if you have some carbs and you have a seizure disorder, yeah, having a seizure can be life threatening. You're driving a car, you have a seizure, you crash. So I'm not so worried, but during the weight maintenance phase, you might be able to have cookies. So I hold out and, and say it's not forever. Of course, the, the idea that it's going to be forever deters a lot of people from any kind of change. No, it's just a period of time that you're trying to achieve a goal. And then we talk about how you can reincorporate carbs back in again. I'm not sure you have to be keto the rest of your life to have longer, happier lives. I think some people can eat carbs and not be in ketosis and have long, healthy lives. Yeah, even though I use keto as a therapeutic tool. So the metabolism is different for different people. Manipulating the ingredients so 15 total carbs magically turn into three net carbs offers you nothing more than an empty promise. So looking at the net carbs, 
you know, zero carb, you know, and then in a little font that says net. You always want to look at the label where it says nutrition facts, just like she's showing. I, I like that. You will eat more calories than you need. Some of those non-digestible carbs will be digested and your cravings for more sweet treats will not quiet down. Scare tactics make great headlines and the word cholesterol can strike fear into the healthiest among us. My husband has a family history of heart disease, so I do not take the topic lightly. LDL cholesterol can increase when you follow a ketogenic diet. And as we all know, LDL carries with it the nickname bad cholesterol. The question raised by Dr. Paul Mason in this video that I will link to is, what is the evidence that high LDLs will kill you? In his video, he points to this systematic review titled lack of an association or an inverse association between LDL cholesterol and mortality in the elderly. Systematic reviews are not looking at one experimental study. Instead, they review multiple studies looking for patterns. That makes them valuable because you now have a large population of study participants from which to draw conclusions. This review paper assessed more than 68,000 individuals and found that those with the highest LDL levels lived the longest. Our understanding of the human body has grown so much over the past century. Multiple cardiovascular risk factors have been identified from high HbA1c, triglycerides, and inflammatory markers to LDL particle size. In fact, here is a figure from a paper published in 2022 showing 13 known cardiovascular disease risk factors. Low-carb dieting was shown to be beneficial for 12 of those cardiovascular outcomes, yet we continue to reduce heart health to one factor, LDLs. I am not saying that LDL cholesterol is never part of the problem. It can be, especially if the particles become oxidized or you have too many of them. However, the idea of LDL cholesterol as a single causative factor needs more scrutiny. There are companies with a vested interest in upholding this fear that high LDLs are the end-all be-all of cardiovascular disease. I encourage you to learn more. I will link to this study, Dr. Mason's video, and my video on cholesterol and low-carb dieting to help you start that learning. Yeah, I have to agree. The jury's not in. The data's not all in. And the metabolism on low carb diets is very different than the metabolism on high carb diets. And it's very possible that the food or the marker in the blood means something entirely different. So uh, I agree that the fear mongering about, so if, you're, if you haven't even started a low carb keto diet, not to worry, two thirds of the time, all of the markers in the blood look good, even the LDL, two thirds of the time. The problem or, you know, the concern comes in because one third of the time that LDL cholesterol can go up. Of course, the compensating thing that we're very, you know, eyes wide open about this, but the thing that might actually outweigh the rise in LDL is the rise in the HDL, the good cholesterol. So when someone says your cholesterol goes up, it might be that it's the good cholesterol that goes up. And, and so the total cholesterol really doesn't tell you the whole picture. But yeah, so far I agree that the net carbs and the introduction of keto junk foods has distracted a lot of people from a real food based kind of program. So if you're eating those kinds of things, you have to be very careful of the total carbs or the amount of it that you're having. And then the fear mongering or scare tactics about that's gonna get you, we're, no, it has not come true. The idea that everyone's gonna die if they do a high fat diet. That's the thinking 25 years ago when I first started studying and publishing papers on low carb diets. In fact, the, there was concern that people might, you know, like be danger and fall off a cliff. That's not what we're talking about here. You can actually reverse health problems, which makes us in the clinical world a little skeptical of the idea that all of these other things are getting better. How could one element just be so powerful to overcome everything else? And you have to have that kind of clinical experience and seeing people with improvements in their overall health without everyone getting cardiovascular disease to be able to make that kind of observation and statement. So fortunately, more science is happening. If you haven't seen the video that I did on the recent LMHR study, that's a start. 
in the right direction of studying this phenomenon, but of high LDL, that most people don't have that anyway when they do a low carb keto diet. If fewer carbs are good, wouldn't no carbs be better? It may be surprising to hear, but your body can run without eating carbohydrates. And this is not just conjecture. This paper published on NIH's website states that the dietary carbohydrates you need to consume to stay alive is zero. Did you notice for your followers that Amy Berger was one of the authors? Amy is the co-author with me and Your Carb Confusion, which is my award-winning book and her award-winning book got a keto book award at the Metabolic Health Summit. It's gotten great feedback because it's well-written, easy to understand, and your carb confusion might be a book you're interested in. Provided that adequate amounts of protein and fat are consumed. However, you do not need to give up all carbs to follow a low-carb or even keto diet. Some people do, you don't have to. Yet this idea that keto equals no carbs may cause a friend to look at you with concern when you tell them you are starting a ketogenic diet. You can eat a daily salad and have a daily side dish of vegetables with a meal and maintain ketosis. The keto meal plans I provide on my website include them. If you want an easy list to refer to, download my free list of low-carb foods. It gives you 100 foods to choose from. What these aspects of diluting keto, keto snacks, scare tactics, extremes, have done is they've introduced doubt. And when that gets in your head, results cannot happen. Well, I, yeah, that's a good point. But I think the getting into a program with somebody who's had experience with it, asking people who've done it a while, get into a, even it could be a social media group, of people who are doing it. There's so many different ways to learn about it. And you just have to take the other opinion of other, other types of research on carb eaters. You know, remember, if there's research being done, you have to add at the end, under the conditions studied. And the work that's done on carb eaters when it comes to the cholesterol metabolism, I don't think is gonna apply in the same way. This is my clinical and early publication research in abstract form. That's the Dave Feldman study. It's fascinating to see. In, in essence, these people have really high LDLs, and not everyone had heart disease. In fact, half had no evidence of coronary artery disease, and we're not talking about calcium scores. We're talking about CT angiogram, which is the best way to look at arteries short of actually inserting a catheter and putting some radio nuclei, radio dye in, in the heart. So, you know, we're collecting data on what happens to people, you know, the royal we, <laughs> the people who are using keto diets and seeing clinical response, even reversal of type two diabetes and obesity and metabolic syndrome. The way we put it together for cardiovascular risk is it just helps people in a different way. It's a different mechanism. It's the triglyceride in the blood and the HDL in the blood, not the total and LDL that people used to think about and or still may be valid among carb eaters. That's a way to kind of diplomatically say both, both camps have some validity to it. In 2017, we were observing keto success everywhere. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever was around back then was filled with before and after pictures. Doubt is always present, but it was overridden by what we were observing with our own eyes. Those observations created motivational thoughts. I think I can do this. Oh my gosh, this is different, but I like those foods. I can do this. As I said, doubt is always a thing, but back then our focus was diverted away from doubt to success. What you focus on, you find. Today, those diluting factors we talked about have allowed doubt to trickle back in. Now we hear saying, those keto cookies are everywhere. They can't be that bad, or at least they're a step in the right direction. I'm going to try them. Or I get that LDL cholesterol is not the end-all be-all of health, but it is scary. Or my friend is right. Life is not worth living if you can never eat carbs again. Our focus slowly shifted from keto works to keto doesn't work, what you focus on, you find.
I don't have all the answers. I don't know which diet is best for you, and I'm not telling you to go keto. My diet is not low enough in carbs to maintain ketosis throughout the week. However, I eat a low-carb diet and practice intermittent fasting, so my body will produce ketones when my glucose level is low and they are needed. That is called being metabolically flexible, and it is a wonderful thing because my body efficiently shifts between running on carbs and running on fat, so I am never without energy, and I am able to test that. The bottom line of this video is to pick your path, put blinders on, and go. I like that approach, and there's a wisdom to having the ability to measure for those of you who don't trust yourself or trust the program. But if you, it's been studied so much now, I assume this list of foods keeps you under about 20 total carbs or maybe 30 total carbs for the day. That's where our papers have used, the, that's the threshold of carbs per day. Our papers have been published since the year 2002. And we modeled our program on the doctors who had used low carb, high fat diets in their own practice, keeping under 20 or 30 total carbs per day. You don't have to measure ketones, the breath, the blood, the urine. It may help you stay on track if you don't think, but the, if you don't think it's gonna work or you're gonna get results, but the feedback is so fast. In my clinical approach, I say, look, start this in a day or two. You're gonna notice the hunger's gone without measuring anything. So if getting a, a measurement tool is an, an inhibitor, is a, a barrier for you to starting, you don't need that. I agree with Dr. Gillespie that the keto junk foods out there, you know, the thought occurred to me that maybe our processed food industry is going to mess it all up again, like happened in the 1970s and 80s and 90s when saturated fat was the demon and everything came out low saturated fat and so everyone started eating carbs and, and it led to the biggest diabetes obesity epidemic that we've ever seen. Maybe the the food manufacturers are coming out with these keto franken foods and processed foods that are going to have that same kind of damage. It's okay. You don't have to eat those foods. Stay to the outside of the grocery store. Eat the, the from Dr. Gillespie's food list or, or, or my food list if you need to get started. If things have, haven't worked out for you, it may be that you need to be in a group. You may need to be in a class formally to get you to overcome those initial doubts or, or fears, or but changing the food in this manner is not dangerous unless you're on medicines that might become too strong. That's another time when you would want definitely to be with someone who understands this approach, some a doctor or a health provider, because I have to reduce insulin on the first day so that people don't get low blood sugars. The insulin is so powerful in other medicines that they can become too strong on the first day of doing something like this. I, I, I like this approach. I, I agree with most of the things in here. This isn't the only way to, to go about it, but that's okay. We need lots of different approaches to fulfill. We have different colors of cars. We have different types of cars. We have you know inexpensive ones, expensive ones. I think there are a lot of approaches to do low carb keto diets. If you like this, please like, subscribe so you don't miss out on further content. If you don't have my top 10 tips on how to start keto the right way, please look in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and check out adapterlifeacademy.com.